We've all been here before, stuck for countless hours watching YouTube, scrolling through Facebook, Instagram. Our current social media consumption can lead us to depression, addiction, self-doubt, and unhappiness. Because social media provides immediate rewards with very little effort required, your brain begins to rewire itself. We have to stop giving our kids free access to social media and, and phones at young ages. July 2021, United States. A mysterious disease is spreading among young teenagers. Especially girls are admitted to the hospital after experiencing neurological symptoms. Seemingly out of nowhere, they seem to develop tics. Doctors questioned the teenagers and they were baffled as many of them didn't have any history of prior tics. The teenagers only seemed to have one thing in common. They were active on TikTok. My name is Gemmons and today we'll see how social media addiction changes our brains. Let's rewind a bit. It's the early 2000s. The PlayStation 2 and Xbox were just released, Harry Potter took over the world and people started to recognize the power of the internet. A bunch of geeks in different cities saw their computers and they had the same idea. Can we use the internet to connect to each other? And this is how social media was born. Hey Tom, uh, what are you wearing? My new outfit, I'm a trumpet player now. I made a profile on this new website called MySpace where I can share my music. Hi Tom, uh, you look different. Yeah, yesterday I became an entrepreneur as I've created my LinkedIn account and I already bought some cryptocurrency. What is cryptocurrency? Well, I don't know, it's 2003. Hey Tom, uh, Tumblr? Tumblr. And then in 2004, Facebook launched. Facebook was different. People suddenly had a platform to connect with old friends they haven't seen for ages while posting regular updates. Twitter, Reddit and YouTube followed and people started to spend a considerable amount of their free time on social media. And this is also where this seemingly innocent revolution started to transform our brains. An early study in 2011 showed that the complexity of our social networks, meaning how many online friends you have and how you interact with them, is associated with a bigger amygdala. The amygdala is a region of the brain which regulates emotions and evaluates our place in society. Somehow social media convinced our brains that social media friends are real friends and this led to a growth of the amygdala. Other brain regions started to change when the iPhone was introduced in 2007. Brain areas which are used to coordinate our hands and especially our thumbs increased in size when we started to use smartphones. A bigger amygdala and bigger brain regions for hand coordination might not sound too bad, but scientists soon started to record first downsides of social media. And again, the issue is that the brain cannot distinguish between social media and real world. So what if the expectations you have to your life and yourself are not fulfilled on social media? Studies started to report that people with low self-esteem are heavily impacted by the feedback on social media. Especially Instagram, a form of social media where primarily photos are shared, became an issue. If too few likes on photos are received, people reported to feel bad. Others started to feel unhappy as they were constantly exposed to the perfect life of others. And as a coping mechanism, it was found that some people tried to just spend more time on social media in order to get validation. And this is already quite bad, but it is not the biggest issue yet. Besides leading to depressive feelings, social media could also do something else to us, which turns out to be much worse. It could send us reward signals. The brain contains a complex reward system, which involves multiple regions. Every time we perceive something good, dopamine producing cells release dopamine. This dopamine then travels through the brain to the nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens then becomes active and stimulates adjacent brain regions, including the amygdala, which again regulates our emotion. In more easy terms, every time we experience something good, dopamine is released and we feel good. The reward system of our brain is essential as it just keeps us motivated to do things. And this might include eating good foods, getting good grades or defeating Elden Ring bosses. But the issue with the reward system is that not only the pure reward itself but also its anticipation can lead to dopamine. So the more we anticipate something good to happen, the more we experience a good feeling. And this can become addicting. Over the years, the algorithms of social media adapted to feed into the reward system of the brain. The overall goal is to keep us on the respective platform so our brains should receive as much dopamine as possible. Since expecting a reward, and that can be entertainment, is a powerful way to release dopamine, algorithms try to show as much content in as little time as possible. And as a result, our interaction with social media became much faster. And you can see that all the major platforms now have this very short content. Now media are switched every 19 seconds and the majority of on-screen content is being viewed for less than a minute. 
The most extreme examples of this are TikTok, where you could discover a potential new trend every couple of seconds, or Tinder, where you could find a soulmate every couple of seconds. And even if we do not suffer from social media addiction yet, this constant stream of new content can have bad consequences on our brains. In 2000, the average attention span was 12 seconds, and only 15 years later, it shrinked down to 8.2 seconds. Social media created an attention span crisis. A study recently showed that people who heavily engaged in social media performed worse in distracted attention tasks. The paradox thing here was that people who heavily engaged in social media and who performed worse in these tasks had more brain regions being active. It seemed like that they needed more resources just to focus compared to people who are not on social media. At the same time, spending much time on the internet is associated with less gray matter in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. This brain region is responsible for ignoring distractions while following a goal and the reduction might also explain why the attention span became so much worse. Besides reducing our attention span, social media can also become addictive. The average daily usage is 2 hours and 27 minutes. And it is estimated that over 220 million people could suffer from a form of social media addiction. What I want to point out right now is that social media addiction is not recognized as a medical disorder yet, but there are many similarities between social media addiction and other forms of addictions. It often starts with the urge to check your phone, first a couple of times a day, and then a dozen times. You get distracted as you constantly think about your social media and you have a hard time to focus. The same brain regions which are active in other forms of addictions also become activated when you go online. Your brain experiences so many rewards that it starts to dysfunction and you might be at greater risk to develop other mental health problems, including depression. The prevalence of anxiety and depression has increased 70% in the past 25 years in young people, which to a certain degree might be explained by the rise of social media. A study of 326 full-time employees also showed that the overuse of social media increases the risk of burnout and decreases job performance. It is hypothesized here that spending more time on social media results in less energy and resources for other areas of life. However, I also want to point out that it's a bit more difficult to answer what causes what. Is it more that social media directly contributes toward mental health issues or are people who are more prone to be mentally ill drawn towards the free dopamine shots which are offered by social media? What has been shown though is that social media addiction disrupts sleep patterns, which has been proven to contribute towards depressive symptoms. We've once covered how too little or too much sleep damages our bodies and this makes complete sense in this context. Unfortunately, it was also found that spending more than 5 hours on social media a day increases the risk of suicide by 66%. So yeah, there are ways for which social media can harm us on an individual level, but we also have some issues on a global level. In the beginning of the video, we saw a sudden onset of tick-like symptoms in 2021. Ticks are normally observed in people with Tourette syndrome, and although the precise causes of Tourette syndrome remain unknown, ticks often arise during childhood. The weird thing was that many of the teenagers who suddenly reported to have ticks had no prior history of Tourette syndrome. So doctors dug a bit deeper and they questioned the teenagers. They identified two causes of the phenomenon. The first and very important factor is that there was an ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which led to anxiety and stress in teenagers, which might have made them more susceptible towards tick-like behavior. And the second factor was that many of them consumed tick-related content on TikTok. What began as a positive movement where content creators with Tourette's shared experiences became harmful to some viewers as the algorithm spammed them with tick-like behavior. And this became quite obvious when it was found that many teenagers and their favorite creators used the same words and behavior in their ticks. So in this case, it seems like the anxiety caused by the pandemic mixed with the promoted content on TikTok led to what some call social media induced mass hysteria. The majority of teenagers who suddenly developed ticks probably didn't suffer from Tourette syndrome, but developed the belief that they could suffer from it. This was further demonstrated when many of the affected teenagers could easily be treated with behavior therapy. So now that we know about the bad sides of social media and social media addiction, should we just abandon social media? Well, of course not, it's more complicated than that. Social media in its core is great and can give us many advantages. For example, it has been shown that education heavily profits from social media when educational content is shared. And this might start with students helping each other out and it might stop with content creators who make videos about the downsides of social media. <laughs> 
Also small businesses profit from social media as they can share their products more easily. And especially if you're creative and you have something to share, you can share it to the whole world. And that's the thing, social media in itself is great, but the algorithm which just tries to keep us hooked with this dopamine reward system is not. So for us and for you on an individual level, it is important to just watch yourself and see how you behave on social media. Are you connecting with friends? Great. Are you scrolling down the discovery section of an app for an hour while you should sleep? That's not good. And what if social media makes you feel depressed and bad? And then it might be good to take a small break. It has been shown that staying away from social media for a couple of days can help to improve the mood. And some of the issues regarding attention span also improve if we stay away from social media. So if you feel that social media does more bad than good to you, try to just abstain a bit and see if your mood improves. With that, I want to ask you, what is your experience with social media? Do you believe that social media is always good or do you see some downsides? Otherwise, I hope that you like this video and if you're new here, subscribe to the bell button and with that, I'll see ya. We've seen the negative impact of social media on our brains, but there are some things we can do which make us smarter. If you want to know how oversleeping damages our bodies, you might like this video. <laughs>